Since 2011, Time Magazine had utilized a paywall. However, as of June 1st, 2023, that paywall was removed. And with this came a clear traffic recovery and an expansion in the publication's positioning and vertical expansion. In the age of print media being on a fast decline, how is Time funneling its audiences and advertisers to buy their traditional magazine? How is Time managing content publishing platform access? As part of this special WordPress seven-part teardown series, Jeremy Fremont and Vahe Arabian explore Time Magazine, a news magazine with informative guides to what is happening in politics, business, health, science, and entertainment. Over to you guys. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the next installment of the uh, teardown series. My name is Vahe, and I'm the founder of Step to Publishing. And he, we've got with me today my co-host, Jeremy from on, from Multi Dots. Hey, Jeremy, how are you? Doing great. Glad to be here and excited to dive into a hundred years of time on Time.com. This should be an interesting one. It, should, it would definitely be because they um, actually controversially took a the um, opposite direction of sort of diversifying the revenue and and trying to create a first party strategy with uh, subscriptions, but before we go through and delve into that, that's a little bit of a teaser. Let's go a little bit and uh, walk through what time.com is and look at the stats. So what, what do you see from your end, Jeremy? So one of the things that I see right away, we're looking at this and we are recording this in February of 2024. Uh, so a key thing that time.com has is just the sheer volume of content. And I think that they do a really good job with each of the sections of content as far as one of their main things that they want to be able to do is to grow their newsletter, right? So they have different newsletter offerings uh, for each of the different sections. Uh, and I also think uh, in the process of, if you click on sign up for our newsletter ideas, we can see the sheer volume of different newsletter offerings that they have. And it's kind of interesting to be able to select and choose which type of content that you want to see, regardless of its politics, regardless of its science, et cetera. Um, so on your end, right, it's going to a slightly different sign up page than if I'm seeing it on my end. Um, again, you're in Australia, I'm in the US. So each of the pages uh, we're gonna see is geo specific. But that's just one thing that uh, I was noticing when I was in the process of reviewing the site. Um, another thing is that they're keeping up to date, right, with the latest trends. Um, one of the areas that uh, is on the page, they're constant, they're featuring Taylor Swift, right? So they're really taking advantage of who's popping. We can see Taylor Swift up in the left hand uh, corner as far as the view options and then really trying to sell that digital access. So if you want to chat a little bit about the digital access, I think that's one of the offerings that you had uh, made mention of that was pretty interesting of how they're changing their revenue model. Yeah, so basically, I believe, and uh, we'll put the inner notes, the exact date of this, but time made the decision because prior pre-covered, they're going very hard into subscription and like pure paywall, hard paywall strategy to be able to generate more premium to then convert people to subscribe to their uh, magazine section slash also their mag off offline print magazine to to access online. And so it was, I think it was around May or June, they then decided to take that off because um, they, unlike other competitors or similar sites, um, they were sort of stagnating, they weren't growing enough and they thought that this um, wasn't working for them. So what they've done is they've completely made it open. They've added a lot more ads onto their website. You can see, as you were mentioning, Jeremy, they're, they're trying to really leverage on uh, growing the traffic uh, by covering trends like Taylor Swift, where you think historically it's more of a hardcore historical slash sort of politics magazine, and 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 then what they're doing is to then funnel those users into to paying to monetize further. They actually give you um, the sort of all pass access, uh, and what that entails is pretty much getting access, you, you see, sorry, for our podcast listeners, it's either the digital edition, the web access, um, and 
yeah sorry and then you can you can also get a copy of the hardcore uh print edition coming to your home so i guess where i think has they've flipped the switch which i've also seen some of even the clients that i used to work with that now have taken the operator's approach now they've realized that okay if I'm not going to be able to monetize and like if I'm if I'm going to grow my audience and I need to really monetize it, the the premiums that actually come from the products that you create, they've probably realized that their magazine is their premium asset, and so a lot of publishers are going back to actually selling that as a value add where people might have thought back in the day that you know eventually print's going to die die and no one's going to read print anymore. It's the 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 reverse trend is happening. So I think that they've picked up on that and they're just using their website as a traffic funnel towards their premium product offering, which is the historical asset. What are your thoughts about that, Jeremy? I think it's crazy to be able to see, right? Uh, I don't think that a lot of people would have been predicting this two years back. Um, the trend was going the exact opposite direction. Um, but I think that there are some trends that uh, people haven't been able to predict or expect correctly. And some of the times when you just have something that's physical and tangible, such as that print edition magazine, it's just a different experience opposed to if you're actually uh, consuming everything only digital. Uh, I could say one of the things that happens directly with me is if I'm just constantly on my phone and looking and trying to scroll, um, that experience is going to start to give me you know, headaches or items that are going to be more painful. And it's not going to be that I'm consuming a ton of information opposed to if I just actually have a physical print magazine. So I'd imagine that you know, more and more people are starting to have that same experience or that trend where they just want to physically hold something um, directly there. And I think something like time where it does have uh, so much history, so many of these historic people who have been on the front of Times Magazine, um, it's a lot better. Let's say if you are that celebrity, when you can be on the front of a an actual magazine, a physical magazine that you can have in your home versus a digital copy, um, there's just something more tangible about it. Uh, I know that not everybody who's on the front of Times Magazine is making up for all of those sales. They're definitely getting themselves a free copy. But uh, yeah, just uh, just a correlation that I want to make. I think there's also one more thing. No, that 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 all makes sense as well. And I think there's there's always one thing. I did a talk about this last year. And whenever you're going to think about the monetization strategy you have to think about how can you arbitrage that content to be able to then make it worthwhile what the monetization model is and so you know i think a lot of people in the past as well they'll think automatically okay subscriptions is the way to go let us slap on a paywall i try to figure out the user conversion journey from that now if it's not working i mean i'm telling you i, th I think we spoke about this as well we, particularly with wired now they've taken a multi-product approach and so if you don't have the multiple products, that's going to justify the value of keeping readers engaged, keeping readers loyal, then then you're going to fall down eventually in terms of keep retaining the subscribers. So for them, they know historically that the magazine's the asset. They can position it as a premium product. They know they can arbitrage it. And so if it's just a matter of then directing people to, to a particular product that they can convert whilst they can monetize that traffic in the meantime, then I think they're justifying the means at the moment, and um, you know, just have a quick having a quick look at the traffic. I'm just jumping into Ahrefs for our podcast listeners, and and you can see that you know, they'll, you know, uh, 2017 and 2018 before the recent bump was, and the peak period was the highest period ever. So they're getting on just organic search users alone, almost 18 million users. Then then switched on the paid, uh, so, sorry, the subscription paywall um, on. It's been stagnant for several years, having struggles with monetizing. Then all of a sudden, in addition to diversifying the content as well, a little bit more broadly, they're now coming back into the foray. They've got 13 and a half million users there. And um, I think let's just have a look at the overall traffic as well in similar way. And you can see it's 28 million. So they're back, they're back and very competitive, getting the eyeballs and attention um, like most of the competitors are. Uh, where before they were they were struggling for some time so you need to know when you're going to try something if it's not going to work then you need to essentially move on so again i'm not trying to deter anyone from from our listeners to not trust subscriptions at all but just be ready that you have to be able to arbitrage that content to monetize it and then have multiple products that you can off, offer many offerings to and keep their attention reduce the churn and also being willing to iterate right anything in business, sometimes you have to do an experiment. And if you're finding that experiment is failing, 
at a certain point in time, you have to make that decision. And those decisions might be hard, right? Because you might have invested a lot of time, energy, and effort into a monetization strategy that you thought was going to work. If you're seeing that it's not yielding the results, well, it's time to pivot and go the other direction. And sometimes you have to make those hard choices. But what's what's that one interesting experiment that you actually found that we were actually surprised on when you picked it up? Do you want to do you want to go through that quickly now? Or? Sure, we can. Uh, so one of the things is if you can just uh, do any of the listeners on time.com, uh, this is something that I loved. Um, uh, before we go into time sites, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead and look at their source code. And I just love this. This reminds me back in like 1993 when this would have been the same thing. So if we view the source code of time.com, I'd encourage everybody to go to time.com, right click, say view source code, and just look at that. It's magnificent. Right, it's just a HTML document that actually spells out their brand time, and it looks absolutely beautiful. Things like that, I just love. I love seeing. But uh, as I was in the process of going through and experimenting, navigating around their site, one of the things that um, they offer is they offer their own platform, their own CMS platform. The CMS platform it seems to be built on top of WordPress, but they are selling it as far as a no-code solution. So if you want to use their CMS or their platform, you can actually go to uh, time.com forward slash sites, and you're going to be able to see what their offering is. So you're going to be able to request a demo, learn more about their solution, see who their customers are. Uh, they have a lot of customers, actually, that are uh, pretty big known brands. And so I always find it interesting to see um, these, what I'm going to call as like a niche CMS, or how they are actually finding enough utilization of a platform and enough audience that they can serve in order to be able to monetize that in a completely different direction. Uh, I think Box Media, um, they previously had more of a proprietary CMS that had been built in-house. And last year in 2023, they decided to shut it down. Um, so it's also maybe an experiment. It might not last forever. Um, I'd be really curious to see how much monetization is coming from them selling um, essentially a CMS platform to their customers. But uh, I just find it really fascinating to be able to find, you know, these different uh, platforms and offerings such as this. I think as well, as, as one thing I forgot to, um, I, for some reason, I'm not um, grasping the name at the moment. We'll put that again into the notes, but there's an SSP provider that I read recently yesterday on just on LinkedIn that they're now offering their clients access to the top 500 publishing sites uh, via their network in terms of being able to distribute content, publish, and, and monetize from it. Um, there's also native ad platforms like that, like that as well. So maybe what they're thinking as well is like, you know, we know we know the exact advertisers that we want to go after. Here's here's one way of um, doing it, which is through providing uh, premium premium ad experiences. But let's just use this as a way to also like let's build a website, but then. It, connect that to ours to then create that distribution port more natively, maybe at a higher premium. So this could be another way to do it. I think we've seen publishers do the tech play in the tens, in the, in, you know, in the 2010s decade um, to limited success. So- No, that's, exactly. a, that's a very good point though, Vahe, uh, yeah. that they might say as far as a benefit, hey, you're gonna be utilizing our platform. You're gonna be able to extend the monetization efforts and have you know additional ads that are going to be showing through those sites as well. Um, so I mean Clorox, I almost guarantee Clorox.com is not built directly on Times sites, but maybe one of their publication arms of Clorox, right, is built on Times sites. So yeah, um, maybe it's a consumer brand that they're trying to focus on all the different things that you can do with their Clorox products, right? Um, so there's a lot of different layers to that onion, but let's jump back over to the primary site, uh, times.com. Uh, one of the things that uh, I'd like to kind of call attention to, if you can close it down that top ad at the very top, uh, let's just kind of remove that from our um, eyes. And if we click on the hamburger menu uh, on the left-hand side, um, mm -hmm. just the sheer volume of the different categories that they have. So you just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. There's just so much to be able to choose from. Um, they also have a coupon section, right? You'd called out coupons before on a, a previous wow. episode that we had done, which is always yeah. funny and uh, interesting to be able to see people monetizing with uh, coupon codes directly on an organization such as times.com. But everybody's doing it. Uh, and uh, yeah, it shows that that monetization means 
it definitely helps put money in uh, the pockets of even large corporations like time.com so long as it doesn't abuse it like as i mentioned because whenever something is too good to be true it becomes abused and then see you later it doesn't work anymore because other such as such algorithms like uh google's algorithm or it might be the platform that will just sweep that rug underneath you that takes it away yeah so i think the key, the key thing is that so long as they are, are staying true to you know the production value of what they're doing but then using some of those things to generate funnel traffic at a small percentage then i don't see why people would be accepting towards that so yeah let's let's click it. on one of the let's click on one of the categories it doesn't matter which one business tech entertainment sports let's look at sports since um Super Bowl just happened now. Yeah, let's see. Super Bowl just happened. That's it. <laughs> One of the things I that I did notice when I was navigating around on their site uh, is that some of the times uh, image load time took a while, um, especially when I was scrolling down uh, to lower sections of the page. Um, yeah. But I, I did, I did enjoy um, the fact that not all publishers do this, but when you're actually scrolling down and you're looking at the different pieces of content that are going to be available. Uh, we can see more from sports, uh, and they're not doing this on the interior pages, it doesn't look like, uh, but if we click into it, it will show you how many minutes an article is. Um, so I always enjoy that, uh, whenever you can actually see, hey, how long is this article going to be? Um, approximately in the minutes, like a four minute read right underneath of the title. Uh, I think that's always a, a beneficial item uh, as far as something to be able to pull in uh, directly for large scale publishers. Uh, I think that it's good for the user experience. Um, and then their ads, right? We're seeing some of their ads load. Uh, they are utilizing a lot more ads and a lot more variety of ads. Right. Uh, sometimes it's video ads. Sometimes it is uh, simple image ads. And one of the other things that I just wanted to highlight, uh, we can see a video ad popping up in the bottom right hand corner, um, is they seem to be going a lot more heavy on video for their ad experience than other publishers that we've seen or that we've uh, taken a look at. And there, again, there's also the push towards promoting brand content as a way to probably justify the bigger selling ticket items like leveraging the platform, for example. Uh, so there's always like small things that they're doing, as you can see, that they're mixing up more natively to be able to, to justify the bigger ticket selling items. Because with, with, with the brand partners anyways, it's always about what's new on the menu to keep them involved and to show that justify the value as well. There's also increasingly going to be this year, um, I've seen as part of a first data party and engagement strategy as well, having polls. It's not something relatively new, but um, AI is really making that a lot more dynamic based on, and making it more, a lot more exact with the um, user journey that's happening as someone goes onto the website to give them more of a specific question and answer and also to provide ways of keeping them engaged um, where before it was just um, cookie cutter type of questions or uh, placements of that uh, quiz. So there's definitely that type of techniques as well that we, we, I'm seeing that that's also working. But yeah, there's a heavy, there's a heavy focus on native content. You can see like they're really pushing hard on the promotion on sponsored native content. Well, what what, what, what is your thought about all these sponsored ads? So if you look, if you scroll up a little bit, I think it's called the Tableau feed or something along those lines. Yeah, tabula, yeah, the Tableau. What is what is your gut feeling about Tableau? feeds and things along these lines what's your what's your initial gut reaction tell you when you see something like this i think gut reaction person from user perspective is you know it's times why are we have this why, why are we seeing some generic stuff like this on here it does it does might potentially Im impact the brand perception and, and um equity yeah. but i know from a business point of view that at the end of the day they they are really heavily leveraging the time brand as a distribution platform and, and I can now see why they're using so much of their current website to then be able to sell to their advertisers that more premium solution. Um, so they're, they're heavy leveraging, but I, this, start, this could, in, in, um, I mean, so far they're seeing a re recovery of their traffic, which is good because probably they have removed the paywall. So we'll see how long that lasts for if they, if they have so much of this 
ads showing up as well because too much of it can also be eventually deterrent from an SEO point of view as well. Yeah, I agree. It just for me personally, it doesn't align with their brand, right? It's so clickbaity, all of the titles, all of the images that show up in those types of feeds. Um, yeah. So I was really surprised to be able to see that um, directly on their site, but it's also an indication that people are clicking on it, right? People like these wild outlandish headlines. And if people are clicking on the ads, guess what? It's generating revenue. That's 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 it, yeah. So long, but, but yeah, the, I think that, that will eventually be improved. Hopefully it will be improved over time, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, curious to see what kind of pages are currently driving them the most traffic at the moment. Just have a quick squeeze at that. Do you have um, any guesses? What do you think? I'm guessing it's more of the explainer content. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah. So that's probably not the case. Well, I'm surprised. Okay, so they've got a lot of personal finance content that's doing fairly well. Mm -hmm. Like content. I would, I would have expected and coupon coupon again is driving traffic to them. So <laughs> coupons, people love saving money. I guess right. Uh, Everyone's uh, looking for coupons. <laughs> it's going for coupons, yeah. Uh, but but it seems like they're definitely um, entertainment is really driving them value. So they've they've somehow been able to develop uh, the topical authority around that. I would have expected to be a lot more of the historical and political content. But I would have ex I would have guessed that too, and both of our guesses would have been wrong. That's it. So that's a little bit of a downer, but that's fine. It is what it is. So long as um it's sustainable that for them and it's aligning to their strategic direction, then that's that's there up to them. Um, because the fact that they have so many different uh, mediums of reach, uh, millions and millions and millions and millions of people. If we go down to their footer, I'd imagine that there is a media kit. I'd love to see how they set up their media kit page because this is always something that uh, other folks could learn from. Um, if you're doing it well and you have a, a really nice landing page to be able to um, sell your different types of media, uh, it can really help increase revenue. And of course, they're gonna be selling print media uh, and digital media, but I'd just be curious. I'd, I would imagine that this page is probably pretty strong, but again, our gut feelings uh, could be incorrect. No, but I mean, already it goes to like mediakit.time.com. So it's on its own subdomain. Has a nice, clean look and feel. There we go. Uh, Tay Tay is there, uh, highlighted on the magazine, right? So they're taking advantage of uh, pop culture. Print, social, yeah, the events. So they they the positioning themselves more as a, yeah, pop, pop, um, sorry, more of a general lifestyle brand. Okay. Yeah. Global, global reach, powerhouse, so right? Boom. Look at that. That's some strong verbiage. A global powerhouse. And that is, that's true. 120 million reach. Social footprint, 55 million. Yeah. Big reach. Emmy nominations. Just name. I don't know what tent poles are, but uh, it looks like all of these specific categories that they're offering. It's more of the event business. Yeah. Is there anywhere there you can click and see uh, price? Uh, I'm curious to see if they actually showcase uh, price points um, directly in their media kit. Some of the times people make it very clear. Other times you have to reach out and you just have to inquire. Um, so yeah. All of their window. print calendar. This red, this red card, print red card. Two, $278,400 as of 2024 for a full page color ad in Times US versus Times Asia, 83000 So a, a wide range, all the way going down from Times South Pacific from about 20000 for a full page up to the 290000 approximately. And then the black and white, if you don't want to have a full color Still 181,000 for a full page ad. So people uh, people must be making money if they're advertising directly in Times Magazine. So that gives a good indication that the company is probably healthy and well if you see a full page ad in uh, an actual physical print copy of Times. The, 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 so yeah, I think that being very, because then they have the, the credibility, they're, they're being very forthcoming with the specs so that People can be sort of um, ready to to speak to them or be like they, if they're going to speak to them, then they're likely ready to consider 
partnering with them because of the the, the transparency that's showing because like for smaller publishers it's always going to be a challenge um to be able to sell um or have those kind of figures as well because a lot of times a lot of times people would say what's your traffic what's your audience size right and so therefore they'll they want to qualify those people for wasting their time or, or vice versa but you know for them i think that's their defensibility is that the price is the defensibility and they can just if someone's going to reach out to them then you know they're likely going to be doing something with them at a, yep. at a six figure range exactly so yeah, there's a the book level events and yeah there's a yeah, lot but going nice, on. nice and clean right as far as this media kit page very well thought through very well put together agreed agreed and they've got a good sales global sales sales force as well so they can just um capture the um potential clients from everywhere Anything else that caught your eye on uh, their primary site? No, I think uh, not. Not at the not at the first time being. I think it's it's very clear how they're using uh, time as a as a key distribution platform for their premium products to be able to then attract the, the buyers. It's it's um it's definitely a different approach that we're seeing a lot of we're seeing them take versus other publishers at the moment. So it's something I think to learn about. Once you think that you're you can justify the value, then go ahead and be able to command what you think you're worth. So they are persistent though with uh, their other monetization means. Vahe on his screen, he has closed out this pop-up ad at the top of his screen no fewer than five different times. And every single time we go back, that is uh, very red and prevalent in your face to subscribe with their offer. So uh, they're making it clear uh, they still need to make money. Uh, and yeah. Uh, very interesting to see, but uh, across the board, uh, we can see sign up for the newsletter in the top left and then sign up for the newsletter directly right underneath of that middle banner and then subscribe to Inside Times newsletter. So three times in one viewport that we're seeing the offer to subscribe for the newsletters. So I'd imagine that their newsletter reach is also absolutely enormous, right? A lot of people who want to not sift through all of time.com of all the content, they want all of the content in their inbox. So I think that's another big push directly for them. I'm um, bigger than I've seen with a lot of other uh, publishers. Yeah, uh, the media kit page said 3 million. So they're probably, probably growing since then. So yeah, I would suspect that that's really helped them to get more of the lead capture from there. Yeah. Awesome. Any, any final comments or, or tips, Jeremy, or time? I think uh, just the last thing that I'll call out uh, is they do a great job with uh, a clear call to action color, um, red. It really stands out. So anything that they want your eyeballs to be showing as far as a, a call to action button or piece of text that they want you to click on, um, it's very, very, very clear that red stands out from the rest of the page. Um, so what is red, white, and black all over? Well they always say a newspaper right uh but in this case it's a website time.com they're using it red white and black all over so those are the only three colors we're seeing on the screen right now yeah that, that, that definitely they're definitely taking uh advantage or they're definitely taking on the historical um precedents into the digital uh front so with that jeremy thanks for the catch up on time and we'll keep on track with them and and continue on with our teardown series until next time bye everybody special thanks to our sponsors and co-hosts multidots for contributing to the seven part wordpress teardown series be sure to subscribe to future episodes at stateofdigitalpublishing.com and join us for a deep dive into our upcoming WordPress Publisher Success Week starting on February 26 by visiting stateofdigitalpublishing.com slash WP hyphen week. Until next time.